So let's look at our first example together. Now in this example they only want you to calculate the VAT. So calculating the amount of VAT either to be paid to SARS regarding the following transactions indicate each case whether it's VAT input to be claimed or VAT output to be paid over to SARS. And then at the end, we need to calculate the end net amount payable to SARS. Just a note, all amounts include VAT, but here they say the amount that they list here is exclusive of VAT. Note that when I return things back to the creditor, because I bought it originally, originally it influenced input VAT, Therefore, now that I'm returning it, the, out, uh, the input tax will now just decrease. The same if I receive things back from debtors, my output VAT was normally increased. Now that it's received back from debtors, it will decrease my output VAT. So let's consider first the formula that we will use. If I can't go back to what we've done in the previous video, the want, want, have, have. The want, every time I want VAT. So that's what I'm going to calculate. I want the 14% VAT. What do I have? Because what they've given me was the exclusive amount. I have 100. So I have 100. And then the whole time I would multiply it with the RAND value provided for me in this column. Now... The formula will stay unchanged because the whole time I want the same thing. So I want 14 over 100. So when we do the calculations, let's first consider whether it's input VAT or output VAT. Now when I buy trading stock bought for cash, is in other words, stock that will come into the business, therefore it is input VAT. When I bought goods on credit, the same thing, the goods will come to the business, into the business, so it's input VAT. Stock returned to the creditors still is to do with the, the goods that I bought, so therefore it is input VAT, but it will decrease my input VAT. Stock taken by the owner for personal use, again it's stock that was bought. There's two ways of regarding the stock bought from the owner. Either you can see that the owner is a customer now, buying the goods, then it will be output VAT. Or you can see that the input VAT that we've claimed doesn't, will not be sold to anyone else. So I cannot claim for that input VAT anymore. Therefore, I will decrease my input VAT. doesn't matter which one you use. The end result on the tax payable or receivable from SARS will be the same. So you can choose which one makes more sense to you and put it in that column. I'm going to regard it as a decrease to my output VAT, uh, to my input VAT. Then credit sales of merchandise. Now it's goods sold. So the products are leaving, going out of the shop. So therefore connected to that is output VAT. Credit sales of merchandise, same thing. Products going out. So therefore output VAT. Good return, so originally I recorded it as an output VAT, now it's returned, so therefore the output that I've created needs to be decreased. Same bad debt written off, so originally those bad debts were sales that, were, that was created as an output VAT, now that I'm not getting the money from my debtors anymore, I'm also going to decrease my output VAT. So let's then work out the total input, total output to see what is the net payable amount to SARS. So I'm going to calculate the input the whole time by using the formula of the amount times 100, 14 over 100 and then we'll put it into the column. So after calculating all the VAT amounts, my VAT input minus the returns, minus the goods taken from the owner, my VAT output, minus the returns, minus the bad debts, I see that my total VAT input is 6,583 Rand and 50 cents, whereas my VAT output is 61,876 
and 92 cents. So VAT input, remember, can be claimed from SARS, whereas VAT output is the money that I've collected on behalf of SARS. So this must be paid over to SARS. So then I'm going to take the output amount minus the input amount. So then the net amount payable to SARS will then be 55,293 rand and 42 cents.